it Cause you're done fucked up And you're scared of it You better learn from a man Who's afraid to dance With a witch like me And a wicked trance Cause I've been around For a million years No matter how tall you try You can't fuck with this The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the God of Sanctum Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Skagnes Sanctum Coup d'Etat, and could this be the night of an absolute overthrow could we see two championships change hand as we are about to witness the first title fight of the evening it's been advertised for the last six weeks the omega jordan shaw steps into the sanctum for the very first time and we know who his opponent is we know what a bad man his opponent is the god of sanctum champion not a sanctioned championship still in stagna sanctum but nonetheless a title that is being carried around but this man has been interesting to watch, to say the least. And you can tell by the crowd reaction, his, his energy, his vibe here in the Sanctum, the fire behind him, that red lighting. Jordan Shaw as the Omega is not one to mess with, and it seems he brought an alter ego, if you will, to face CZB. But what I'm curious about is, if you've been paying attention, the Omega's personality, I don't think, ends with him. I feel like there's some other characters here, but but it remains to be seen. Again, remember, all entrances will be announced as both competitors are in the ring. And listen to this place come unglued for the crazy bastard himself. Holding that reimagined old Prince of Vegas championship as the new God of Sanctum championship. Again, not sanctioned. CZB has just been defending it tirelessly. This is his third defense, saying, who will step up? Who will step up to take this from me? I'm willing to fight anybody. Remember, this is going to be Sanctum rules. Classic Stegna Sanctum rules. Anything goes. No count out. No rope break. The only way to win is knockout or submission. And that has been the way that CZB has retained that title the way he's made it, his name here in Stegna Sanctum. I'm interested to see if CZB ever makes it over to the main SVW roster because I think it's going to be one to hold. And don't forget that tonight, right after this match, the main event of the evening, the massive Lincolnshire title fight between Duncan Riley and the champion Jackson Bates. And that is one I am personally extremely excited for. But first, we have to see this. And this will be a different match from tonight. This will be a much different fight as CZB hoists a title in the air. This will be a fight. I think we can expect a classic wrestling match tonight. But for this one, it's going to be a fight. There's that God of Sanctum title with the crown on the front. Again, alluding to the old Prince of Vegas title. Introducing first, the challenger from Camden, Arkansas, weighing 240 pounds, the Omega. And his opponent, from the borough of Manhattan, New York, weighing 241 pounds, he is the God of Sanctum, champion CZB. Big fight field. They have had a war of words. They have gone back and forth. It has been extremely entertaining. Is the Omega the one to step up and beat CZB? CZB has said the Omega's legacy hasn't even begun. The Omega says it is my legacy. This begins my legacy. That is what it's all for. Who comes out on top? Omega, crazy bastard. And the bell rings and we're off. 
Walking across the ring and a spinning back fist from CZB. Two of them. Elbows over the top. CZB with strikes. And a huge cross body taking Omega over the top. CZB coming out strong, and I think that's exactly what he planned on doing against this, I don't want to say supernatural character, if you will, but man, CZB throwing him into the steps, grabbing a steel chair early on, crack to the skull from the crazy bastard and now hammering away. This is the exact strategy I would have picked myself if I had to face this psychopath as he delivers a massive boot to the face of the crazy bastard now trying to fight back. He knows what he's in for. He wanted to know which version of CZB he was going to get. CZB has alter egos of his own, if you will. Not exactly alter egos, but personalities he taps into in these huge fights. And huge, huge, almost a Sister Abigail-esque move there from Jordan Shaw, the Omega. He's looking for that crown of thorns. And the submission now. The submission, one way to win is by tap out by submission. He has him in a surfboard here, upside down, but CZB escapes and Jordan Shaw fights out. Both men back to their feet. I thought that could have been it. CZB looking for a run and headbutt, but Omega stopped him in his tracks. CZB at the back door and now connects with that running headbutt. And that's the type of offense we see from CZB. I think against Xander Cruz in his debut match a couple of events ago, he must have delivered 15 to 20 different headbutts. Huge overhand rights from CZB in the corner. He is known to do whatever it takes to keep his opponent down. And now doing a little showboating is CZB. Working this crowd over the top. Bulldog choke is locked in. Bulldog choke from CZB is locked in deep. Will the Omega tap here? Both men trading submissions. Will the Omega tap struggling in a Bulldog choke? from CZB paying homage to one of his favorites of his career as Omega seems to fight back. Fighting back here from Omega, running, looking for a pounce of his own, but CZB avoids it. CZB evades out of the way and another headbutt from CZB saying whatever you can do, I can do better as he floats over the top to the outside and CZB is hyped. Listen to this crowd. What a non-stop back and forth fight we've had from these two. CZB playing the guitar there. I don't know if that's also an homage. And huge overhead right, overhand rights, excuse me, as he takes down CZB. And now Jordan Shaw with the taunt of his own. And CZB from the back with a running stop over the top. My God. Absolute insanity here. CZB has him up, has the Omega up. What's he looking for? Over the shoulder and launched into the turnbuckle post there, into that ringside post. Motioning and this could be the end. CZB motioning, this could be the end for the Omega. And the Omega kind of popped back up there, almost no sold that. And tossing CZB, looking to pick him up, power bomb position. CZB up in a power bomb on the outside concrete. And that does CZB no favors, trying to retain that title. So far, it's been a lot of CZB as he fights back there with maybe a little bit of an adrenaline rush and no sell of his own. It's been almost all CZB, but I feel like that's been all in an effort to take up the Omega early on. Powerbomb position on the barricade there from CZB. Absolutely showing why he is the veteran in this contest. But make no mistake, the Omega has shown exactly why he belongs not only in SVW, but here in the Skegna Sanctum. I mean, this, this, this presence, if you will, seems that he wants to fight. He wants to fight in CZB up top. 30 driver from CZB that has put so many men out. That has knocked him up. And look at the Omega. Straight back to his feet. And CZB says, come on in the big back elbow. Omega pops up with a huge insiguri. I cannot believe he took that 30 driver like it was nothing. As I was saying... He is not one to mess with. Omega to the outside of the chair and CZB with a kendo stick and a crack to the skull. Almost saying again, whatever you can do, I can do better. And now fighting over this kendo stick as Omega is trying to fight back here. Get back, back in this match. Hoisting CZB up over the top. Gut first onto that ringside railing, that barricade. 
This is unreal. A huge overhead suplex there from the Omega. And a massive drop kick. These two are just battling back and forth. The outside, the inside, weapons, finishers. Remember, Omega is looking for that crown of thorns. I thought maybe he was going to get it there and CZB reversed out the back door. More massive chops and slaps to the skull from the crazy bastard representing Wolverine. And I think that's a, a really great way to represent who CZB is. Up again, 30 driver connects, another one. Another 30 driver. And Omega looked out. Omega looked out right in the sleeper hole. CZB's got a sleeper locked in right after the 30 driver. Is this it? Is the Omega going to tap? Is he going to tap? He only lasted about seven seconds, but I think he escaped sooner. I think he started fighting out sooner, and that might have put him out right after a 30 driver, no less. Springboard looking for a draft kick. CZB misses again. And another Sister Abigail from o the Omega. He's got to go for the end here. And back in, finally, back to the submission. Now his chance to make CZB tap out, hitting the finisher of his own and looking to make CZB tap out. Will CZB submit? Will he submit to this surfboard submission from the Omega? Can the Omega make the crazy bastard tap out? And again, CZB escapes. Going back and forth here, rights and lefts from the Omega. CZB against the ropes and a huge back elbow from the Omega trying to keep CZB down. We saw them trade finishers and submissions just now. What's it going to take? CZB fights out of the corner with a kick to the face. Kick to the gut. Another. The third. Omega driver. The third Omega driver. CZB picks him up. Is he, is he taunting here? He's taunting here. Kick to the gut. And a fourth 30 driver. And that's got to be it. I think he's out cold. And the bell rings. The bell rings and this one is over. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner. And still, the God of Sanctum Champion, C, C, B. Ladies and gentlemen, an incredible fight, but we have got to go to a word from our sponsors. Mr. Turtle, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? I never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. One, two, three, three. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. Um, uh, um, um, And just because they don't move doesn't mean they're dead. They're alive. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare for our main event, we, wait, wait a minute. Well, look who it is. Hey, Jax. Just wanted to drop by and wish you good luck in your match against Duncan. I mean, after all, if I can beat him, then <laughs> certainly you can beat him. But something tells me that you aren't going to do that. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that my offer for Winter in Vegas 3 still stands in case you uh, fumble in the bag. <laughs> Cam, wow, so kind of you.
But um, first of all, the No Limits title isn't a consolation prize. And second of all, I ain't losing. Thanks for the well wishes. Wow. Well, interesting development there. I mean, Cam still leaving that offer on the table. I know that's been out for quite some time. But ladies and gentlemen, we have our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the Lincolnshire Championship. Unbelievable. I am in shock and still trying to figure out the feelings I have about the match that we are about to witness as the Lincolnshire champion makes his entrance for our main event. I'm still reeling off the first match of the night, CZB versus the Omega, ending in a knockout as we saw him hit not one, not two, not three, but four 30 drivers on the Omega. Jackson making his way down to the ring here, dressed in white, carrying the Lincolnshire Championship he has carried for 170 days. He won this back at a, at a house show, if you will, against Samuel McTavish back at the beginning of July. He has defended it eight times since. He's competed for the belt nine times. This is the 10th against the former Patriarch the world breaker, Duncan Riley. And this is a massive, massive fight. Duncan Riley confronted Jackson at the end of Stegna Sanctum Immortality nearly two months ago. And then they had a war of words over the, over the two months, over mostly social media. They never met in person again until yesterday at the way and listen to this crowd reaction. I said it at Immortality, but we had never heard Jackson be booed before that night since his entrance into SVW. But man, since then we have seen him low blow, not one, but two opponents to keep that title and to, and to win his match. And here comes the world breaker. Never before stepping foot in sanctum in in-ring competition. Listen to this arena. This place is on fire, and this event was named Coup d'etat because the potential we may witness, not only in our first match of the evening, but in this main event. And I said it before, and I'm gonna say it again, Duncan fucking Riley is here in Sanctum. The man is massive. He has always been massive. He has been a threat to everyone in his path. He was the King of Vegas champion for over a year. He was the wingman champion for nearly, I think it was seven or eight months. He is an absolute mammoth in the ring and he is no joke. Not a single person in professional wrestling doesn't know Duncan Riley is. He is the conductor of his theme song playing here tonight. And he's having fun. Jackson looks poised and ready, but Duncan is having fun. I don't know if that says that Duncan is, is in for a rude awakening, or if it says that this is child's play to him. But Jackson has made it clear that this will be the most one-sided victory in the history of Stag Vegas wrestling. He looks to embarrass Duncan Riley. He looks to take over Stag Vegas wrestling. Can he do that tonight against the world breaker? I would say one of, if not the biggest title fights in the history of the company, all for the Lincolnshire Championship, a championship that has built immense prestige since being introduced. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger from London, England, weighing 285 pounds, the world breaker, Duncan Riley, and his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 245 pounds. He is the flag bearer, the Lincolnshire champion, Jackson Bates. Big fight feel. As Jackson hands over the Lincolnshire championship 
for what could potentially be the final time, but Jackson has continued to prove us wrong. Xavian, Freddie Fox, King Phoenix, Reyes, the list goes on. The names he has defeated are not lesser names. The bell rings, the 15 minutes of the clock, and a huge European uppercut. Remember, it's a 15 minute time limit. Submission only, and a massive chop from Duncan Riley taking down the champion. And another massive spinning back chop from Duncan Riley. We saw that running Euro uppercut and a third chop. This is, this is hard to watch. A huge Euro uppercut out of the gate, three chops, and now a belly to belly suplex just tossing the six foot one, 245 pounder over his head like a rag doll. And another suplex. Jackson is getting thrown from corner to corner. If this keeps up like this, and a, th a third belly to belly suplex, I was gonna say if this keeps up like this, I don't know, I don't know if Jackson can make this. I mean the beating has begun. You gotta remember the strength of each one of these moves from Duncan is huge. And another massive chop shushing the crowd. Look at Jackson falling to the mat. Ladies and gentlemen, we are a minute and 15 seconds. Another massive chop here, a minute and 20 seconds here in this match. We've seen Jackson put in positions like this time and time again. And every time he comes back as Duncan throws Jackson to the top rope and a shoulder block taking Jackson out. There is a lot of game time left, but Duncan looks good. That is a rough start for Jackson Bates. He's going to have to fight back here. I'm expecting a fight back. We've seen it time and time again as Duncan throws Jackson into the ring barricade there. Steel meets shoulders as Jackson, uh, I'm sorry, Duncan looking to inflict more punishment. No, up in the powerbomb position. We saw this earlier tonight. This is never good. Duncan near the apron and a huge powerbomb into the apron and swinging him skull first into the steel on that apron and now Duncan mounting with rights. Remember, there's a 20 count. You can get counted out. You can get disqualified. The title would change hands if Duncan were to win by count out or disqualification. But so far, this has been all Duncan Riley. Two and a half minutes in, not a single ounce of offense from Jackson Bates. Again, I'm expecting it. And there it is, Memento Mori. Memento Mori submission locked in. That's the one that Duncan's looking for. The sleeper hold. Locked in tight as Jackson gonna tap. Remember, it takes seven seconds. It's already been more than seven seconds. Jackson's gotta get out of this thing. It's been 15 seconds. How is he not out? He's gotta be fading. He's gotta be fading to Jackson with the reverse elbow there. Fighting out his first ounce of offense. Jackson with a springboard cutter. A cutter from Jackson taking on the six foot six behemoth Duncan Riley. Dragging into the ropes. Three minutes in. And another springboard. This time with a European uppercut of his own. And this is the Jackson Bates we have seen so many times before. But has the damage been done? And Jackson with a huge leaping knee calls it kill confirmed. Any of those massive knee strikes. Kill confirming that German suplex to the six foot six, 285 pounder. The throne, the throne is locked in. How many men has he beat? Duncan, are you kidding? Duncan immediately escaping this. I don't even know if that was locked in. Duncan immediately escaping the throne. And another one, another scoops him up, but Jackson hooks the leg. Side headlock takeover. Jackson looking to keep the momentum rolling. And throwing the six foot six, 285 pounder. Do not forget the strength of the Lincolnshire champion. Kicking a drop down and a huge uppercut slap, insulting the world breaker. That's the kind of Jackson we've seen in another German suplex. Looking for another kill confirm. And Duncan with a massive leaping drop kick. Are you kidding me? 285 pounds of man taking you off your feet and now throwing Jackson again. And this is what I was afraid of. Duncan, without even any difficulty, just immediately taking back over and throwing the Lincolnshire champion around the ring again. Four and a half minutes in, clubbing, clubbing blows. Remember, the ref could end this thing. It's submission only, but the ref could call it. And now lefts from Duncan. Ladies and gentlemen, this has not been a technical wrestling match by any means. 
and more lefts by Duncan Riley. This is, this is getting hard to watch. And a slap to end that there, and a stomp to the gut. Now Duncan looking for more clubbing blows, but Jackson taking the window out the back door. Duncan catches him, power slam again from Duncan Riley. At every turn, and more clubbing blows to the back of the head. Jackson looks out of it. How in the hell is he not out cold? This is, this is getting tough, ladies and gentlemen. Duncan back in the corner, and no, not again. And another slap to the chest that takes the wind out of you, and a headbutt to the back of the skull. Ladies and gentlemen, this is becoming difficult. And now clubbing blows from the back from Duncan Riley. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming at a loss for words. If you have children, you may want to have them look away. More rights from Duncan, slapping the face. Another cutter from Jackson out of nowhere. Slapping the face of Jackson, hitting the ropes and a cutter. A cutter from Jackson again, trying to amp up here. He's got to be on all adrenaline he's got. He has been done nothing but take a beating this match. He told Duncan it was going to be the most one-sided victory in the history of Skag Vegas Wrestling and a huge reverse GTS lifting the 285 pounder. Remember, we've seen Jackson lift bigger men. It's no shock. We heard him say this is going to be the most one-sided victory, but but maybe it's the other way as Jackson, Jackson isn't even walking straight. Rolls back in the ring trying to take a breather and saying, fuck off. What do you got, Duncan? Bring it on. We have not seen any vintage Jackson Bates suicide dives here. Duncan just taunting on the outside, almost giving Jackson a window and a huge backdrop on the concrete. Jackson's been trying to take advantage here, but you gotta wonder, is Duncan toying with him? Is he toying with the Lincolnshire champion? And Jackson should not be taunting at all. You should not be taking the time to taunt. A right hand here to Duncan Riley. Jackson trying to fight back. Jackson, you have got to get on the offense. Duncan grabbing the face and slapping the face, and that makes me think that was all a game from Duncan Riley. Jackson fighting back, but Duncan not letting it be to any avail. Huge rights from Duncan throwing Jackson back in the ring. 7.42 left on the clock. A lot of match time, a right from Jackson. Back elbow from Duncan. And a huge spinning back chop again. And just like that, he puts him down. Another overhand right. Another overhand right from Duncan. And a huge Dominatus Lariat from Duncan, folding the champion inside out. Ladies and gentlemen, there's seven minutes left. Right hand back in. Memento Mori. Memento Mori locked back in. You gotta be kidding me. Is this it? Is Jackson gonna tap out? Is it over just like that? Is Jackson gonna tap new Lincolnshire champion? Could it be? Is Duncan the new champion? And no, Jackson is out. He's escaped. Back elbows. Using the thing for damn near 30 seconds. Jackson trying to fight back here with a knee to the gut of Duncan Riley. Six minutes left. Jackson trying to get anything in here. Any kind of offense. Looking for chapter 13. Duncan caught him by the mouth. Overhand slaps to the face. Again, it's all Jackson trying to fight back with rights. Misses an elbow. Duncan's trying to end this thing. No, no. Memento Mori for the third time. For the third time. Damn it. Damn it. Is he going to make him tap? Six minutes on the clock. Is Jackson Bates going to tap out? Do we have a new champion? Jackson always fights out. Can he stay in this thing? No. Are you kidding me? Jackson tapped. Jackson tapped out. We have a new champion. Unreal. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner. And new Skag Vegas Wrestling Skagness Sanctum Lincolnshire Champion Duncan Riley. Oh my God. Did you see Jackson in the corner? He tapped out and then he tried to scramble to his feet. I don't think he even knew where he was. I cannot believe what we just, and look at Jackson on one knee on the outside. I am in shock. I think that was the most one-sided victory in the history of SVW, but I do not think 
it was for Jackson. I think it was for our new Lincolnshire champion, Duncan Riley. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time from Stegna Sanctum.